An extract from Converted on LSD, read by David Clark. Trouble was on its way in the form of religious oppression, and it grieved me to have to deal with it. One Sunday morning, in 1983, I took to church a friend of mine's daughter. This was the daughter of Dick Holmes, who I used to work with as an aerial rigger. She had been through a divorce and was finding life difficult. I suggested she came with me to church, as she needed help from God. She was dressed in tight black slacks, a short top which showed all her figure. She had long peroxide blonde hair and face was made up. This mode of dress was a striking contrast to the elderly ladies who dressed very somberly and all wore hats or covered their heads in the church. Unfortunately, this was too much for Mrs Everett, who came up to me after the meeting. I called it a meeting because the meetings of the New Testament churches were not called services. And she said to me, the next time I bring a female to chapel, I should tell her to wear a hat. Mrs Everett said that all gospel standard churches insisted women cover their heads, and so should we. I responded by saying, whatever others do, that was their concern. They were wrong if they enforced the covering of a head upon a non-church member and women visitors having no profession of faith in Christ. I said she must raise the issue at our church meeting. The spirit of legalism naturally took me back. Here was a younger woman in severe distress needing the mercy and love of God as revealed in Jesus Christ and all Mrs Everett seemed to be concerned about was the wearing of a hat. I knew the principle of a believing woman dressing modestly and being in subjection to her husband and covering her head in worship. I also knew the principle of a woman not to exercise the authority over a man. But this action of Mrs Everett, to use the phrase, took the biscuit. I was a man and was being instructed by a woman, Mrs Everett, to order or insist a visiting unbelieving female to wear a hat in order to uphold a principle that it was a shame for a woman to worship God without a head covering. This covering, according to the scripture, was to show the angels that she was in subjection to the man and not usurping authority over him. Mrs. Everett missed the whole point of the gospel and in her religious zeal to maintain an outward form of religion, she transgressed the rule that she sought to uphold. This religious spirit was not of God, and I believed the gospel needed to be preached to set men free from such darkness. But who should do this? A spanking from the pulpit. I was very conscious of the instruction that I was responsible to God for the discipline of my children, and knew the scriptures which spake of spoiling the child through lack of discipline, and the exhortation that if I spare the rod of correction, I would spoil the child, Proverbs 13, 24. The other scripture which spoke to me was that of how a good father ought to rule his house well, his children being obedient and subject to him. That if I did not know how to rule my own house well, how should I be able to take care of the church of God, 1 Timothy 3, 5. I believe the scripture spoke clearly about corporal punishment, and it was a must. Proverbs 29, verse 15 and Proverbs 23, verse 13. The first occasion I felt it necessary to exercise corporal punishment was on Isaac, when he was very small. As I write now, I smile, and I'm sure he would do too. I think he needs corporal punishment now, at his age of 20 years old. Isaac had done something which warranted correction, and I felt this occasion I would use the rod of correction. It was a small, thin garden cane a green one, and made him stand away from me, and I said, it hurt me more than it would hurt him to have to correct him like this. He was about four years old, and I smacked his bottom with the cane, and he jumped and couldn't say a word for a few moments, and then he burst into tears, saying, Daddy, that stings. From that day forward, the cane was called the stinging stick. That was not the last time that the stinging stick was used. On another occasion, I was preaching at Beer and Chapel, and Isaac and Esther were sitting with their mum on the back row of the chapel. During the sermon, Isaac was playing up his mum, and would not sit still, and kept messing about. His behaviour was unacceptable. I was gradually becoming cross with him, until I felt I must do something about it. I stopped preaching, 
and said to the congregation, Excuse me, and climbed down from the pulpit steps, went to the back of the chapel, I picked Isaac up and took him outside the chapel and informed him I was displeased with his behaviour and gave him three smacks on his bottom. With this he burst into tears, and when he stopped, I took him back into the chapel and placed him beside his mother. I then went back into the pulpit and apologised for the interruption and proceeded with the sermon as though nothing had happened. I heard afterwards that the spanking was heard throughout the whole chapel and a couple of the ladies were horrified at what I'd done, but they said nothing to me. I felt I'd done the right thing using the rod of correction to drive foolishness from the child. Proverbs 22 verse 15 Now is corporal punishment correct? Hatred stirs up strife, but love covereth all sins. Proverbs 10.12 Proverbs 10.13 A rod is for the back of him that's void of understanding. Proverbs 13.24 He that spareth the rod hates his son. He that loveth chastiseth him betimes. Proverbs 19.18 Chasten thy son whilst there is hope. Spare not for his crying. Proverbs 19.22 Proverbs 19.29 Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. Proverbs 19.30 The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil, so doth stripes the inward parts of the belly. Proverbs 22.15 Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Proverbs 23 Withhold not correction from the child, for if beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Proverbs 29.15 The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. My answer to that is yes, corporal punishment is correct.